welcome to lecture series in the course advanced geotechnical engineering uh, we are actually discussing module 3 on compressibility and consolidation and in the lecture 1 we introduced ourselves to stresses due to surface loads so in this lecture 2 we will continue further in this particular topic that is in uh, module 3 lecture 2 we are going to concentrate on stresses in soil from the surface loads and we have discussed it that uh, when the soil is uh, can soil can be subjected to uh, you know different uh, shapes the loading can be of different shapes it can be uh, annular shape or it can be a circular shape or it can be a rectangular area or it can be an area of irregular shape or uh, it can be of like uh, in the loading intensity can vary uh, from 0 to Q uh, and, uh, and remain may constant like you know embankment construction or levee construction or dam construction or in case of uh, uh, landfills we have uh, certain uh, you know a, a very flat slopes and uh, the heights can even range up to 200 meters or so. So it will be interesting uh, you know to learn, learn about this particular uh, uh, topic and uh, to compute the stresses in soil from the surface loads. So we, uh, we have actually introduced uh, in the previous uh, lecture that Bosnik's theory and uh, Westergaard's theory and uh, from the by from the Bosnik's theory uh, the number of uh, you know the detections can be made and uh, here we have actually have uh, uh, tried to discuss about in the previous lecture about the vertical stress due to the strip load. That means that if you are having a, a strip foundation and if it is connected uh, with uh, uh, let us say if a, a wall which is actually has a pound continuous foundation running over length L uh, then the strip load is the load transmitted by the structure of the finite width and uh, infinitely length infinitely long uh, surface soil uh, length along the soil surface. So the sigma ZB can be calculated by tre treating the strip loads as the uh, uh, line loads by treating strip loads as the line loads. So sigma z is equal to p naught by pi uh, theta plus sin 2 theta by 2 uh, within uh, theta 1 to theta 2. So theta 1 and theta 2 are nothing but theta 2 uh, minus theta 1 is equal to theta where they are the you know de depending upon the location of the, uh, the uh, point of interest of the uh, this particular uh, you know stress that is from the left side edge of let us say that if you are having a strip load and if it is at a distance certain distance from this point and certain distance from this point and the angle uh, subtended from uh, you know for with the vertical and uh, with the horizontal here is theta 1 and then with this uh, vertical and then this point is theta 2. So theta 2 minus theta 1 that, uh, that is the angle is actually over the uh, breadth of the foundation. So we actually have said that sigma z the p naught is nothing but uh, nothing but q q s q s q s by p pi and theta plus sin two theta by two. This is what actually we have uh, you know discussed in the previous lecture. And uh, the contours of the equal uh, vertical stress of uniformly load intensity, which are actually given here, and the pressure bulbs, it can be seen here under the strip area. The the depth of influence uh, can actually go up to uh, three three b. And in case of uh, square area, uh, the depth is uh, limited. So uh, the zone lying inside the vertical stress contour of value 0.2 Q is described as the so within uh, this zone, and this is called as the pressure bulb. The spread of the pressure bulb for the strip area is large compared to the square area. So uh, so this is here uh, uh, for the uh, a square a, a square area or a square foundation or a footing subjected to uniform load intensity a strip footing or strip foundation subjected to a uniform intensity uh, is actually shown here and uh, the zone within this is actually called as the, the bulb of pressure or pressure bulb. And uh, here what this figure shows is that under the strip area the zone of influence the depth of influence will be large compared to the square area. Now let us uh, consider uh, a strip carrying uniformly vertical loading on an infinite strip on the surface of a semi infinite mass. That means that let us assume that we are having a, a, 
a certain uh, strip of width uh, 2 a it can be b is equal to capital B is equal to 2 a and the loading intensity is 0 at one point and uh, it is q at this point that is x, x is equal to 0. So, this is along the x axis and this is along the depth axis that is z axis. Now, uh, at x is equal to 0 the load intensity is uh, 0 q is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2 a the loading intensity is equal to q. So, there is a linearly varying uh, uh, loading intensity. So, that is the increasing vertical loading on an infinite strip and then this perpendicular to the plane of this figure uh, let us assume that uh, the, the load is actually is uh, you know spreading over uh, you know infinite uh, length. And uh, in order to uh, you know calculate the vertical stress uh, in the uh, due to increase in loading uh, the type of loading like this uh, what we do is that uh, let us assume that we wanted to calculate the stress at a particular point P and uh, if uh, this let P be the point below the uh, uh, below this uh, soil surface that is uh, uh, you know at this is this coordinates of this point are x and z where this distance is x and this distance is vertical depth, vertical depth is z. Now, for an uh, for a you know, for an elementary uh, strip, let us consider a small strip here uh, that is uh, of uh, uh, the the breadth is equal to some ds, the small strip, uh, and uh, let us assume that the load intensity uh, per unit length can be calculated uh, by you know by the, this particular uh, ordinate vertical ordinate can be calculated by similar triangles as a q by 2a. That means that here at x is equal to s let us assume that there is a small strip of uh, uh, elementary strip of ds is there and uh, it is at a distance s. Yes. So, this uh, vertical ordinate divided by s yes, and this uh, from the similar triangles from the, from this similar triangles here this triangle and this, this triangle we can calculate this magnitude as q by 2a into s yes, and uh, that is the uh, you know the uh, load uh, and then the load intensity at that particular point into uh, ds will give the uh, the so called uh, you know load per unit width that is called the uh, what we do is that we treat it like a, a small line load. Now, let us assume that this distance is s. So, when this is equal to s x then this will be equal to x minus uh, s. Now, approximating as a line load. So, this is approximated as a line load now. So, the line load of certain intensity running uh, of the infinite length and uh, with intensity of this uh, line load is nothing but uh, q by 2a s into ds. So, uh, now wha what we need to do is that we need to substitute uh, in the expression for the vertical stress sigma z is equal to 2q by pi into z cube by x square plus z square to the raise 2 in this for q um, substitute q by 2a s into ds. So, that we what we do is that because of this uh, small strip load uh, we get uh, what is the uh, you know small d d sigma z then when we integrate for the uh, to entire length of the 0 to 2a what we get is that uh, the vertical increase in vertical stress due to uh, the particular load intensity. So, this uh, further we can actually continue like uh, sigma z is equal to the integral of d sigma z and uh, with uh, by substituting uh, uh, you know the uh, the 1 by 2a and 2 q by pi into uh, when s limits are nothing but this s is uh, ranging from uh, 0 that is at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2a that is s is equal to 0 to s is equal to 2a and uh, z cube into s ds by x minus s whole square plus z square to the raise 2. Now, here what we did is that we substituted uh, for uh, uh, substituted uh, q by 2a into s into ds for q and uh, x minus s for uh, x and uh, z, z is uh, z is kept it as z. So, by uh, integrating and then simplifying what we get is that sigma z is equal to q by 2 pi into x by a alpha minus sin 2 alpha sin 2 delta. So, this alpha and delta which are nothing but this uh, inclination that is this delta and then this is uh, lambda this is uh, this is alpha and this is delta. So, let us assume that we are actually have interesting have a point at the uh, at this particular point here. Let us say that in that case what will happen is that uh, the delta will be equal to 0 when this uh, load intensity when we are actually interested in uh, calculating the stress at this particular point then the load intensity at this particular point 
uh, you know then in that case uh, the lambda, uh, this delta will be equal to 0. Now we are actually having a case where alpha that is uh, covering the breadth of this uh, so called strip of width d a and uh, delta. Now uh, this uh, width delta is equal to 0 and sigma z is equal to q by 2 pi into x by a alpha where after uh, once we get the based on the uh, you know the different uh, the depth, depth requirements and once we compute this alpha then alpha need to be expressed in the radians. So uh, with sigma z is equal to q by 2 pi into x by a alpha minus sin 2 delta and when delta is equal to 0 that is right below the you know uh, where the load intensity is actually is high and then we can actually calculate uh, the sigma z as q by 2 pi into x by a into alpha. Now let us consider further we by using the same concept let us see that uh, how uh, you know we are we can actually construct the uh, you know the stresses below the embankment loading or let us assume that we are having a, a certain uh, area loading over a certain area uh, because once we uh, you know uh, we learn about the consolidation and uh, in order to calculate the settlements you need to calculate what is the increase in stress due to loading let us say embankment loading or uh, due to landfill loading or due to certain uh, you know dam uh, or levy loading. So in this case let us consider a simple embankment is uh, you know simplified with uh, having an horizontal distance A and uh, horizontal distance horizontal distance of the slope portion is A and uh, this, this is actually B. So this vertical uh, in the load intensity is uh, simplified by you know having uh, Q is the load intensity and uh, as we go down here the load intensity falls here. So here uh, what we can do is that we can actually use the same concept now at this point here this point is right uh, lies right below the right below this uh, point Q and alpha 2 is this inclination and alpha 1 is this inclination and uh, uh, th now what we do is that we will use the method of uh, uh, superposition and uh, what uh, we do is that in order to compute the vertical stress at a semi infinite uh, mass due to embankment loading uh, uh, what we need to do is that simply extend this line further and uh, cal calculate by using again similar triangles uh, between this triangle and uh, uh, this, uh, this, the, 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 this particular uh, triangle and uh, this this particular uh, uh, you know triangle so what we get is that uh, we can actually calculate this width is equivalent to b so uh, from the similar triangles again we can actually get what is the load intensity that is nothing but uh, q into b by a so uh, this is this particular loading is assumed as a fixious loading and uh, we converted this embankment loading into a, a triangular uh, strip having load intensity varying from q0 to uh, q plus uh, q plus uh, q into 1 plus b by a and uh, a plus b is the total uh, you know horizontal distance of the strip and uh, the point is actually lies right below right below the that is at the center of the uh, you know uh, embankment so this is the point so this angle is nothing but the alpha 1 plus alpha 2 and this width is nothing but a plus b now we because as this loading is not there so what we need to do is that this particular stress additional uh, loading due to this fixious portion what we assume need to be deducted. So that point the stress due to that one is say uh, sigma z1 and stress to due to this portion is say sigma z2. So sigma z at point A is equal to sigma z1 minus sigma z2. So here uh, this particular uh, uh, you know uh, triangle which is nothing but having intensity Q into B by A and breadth B. So this uh, uh, triangle is uh, having uh, b and then this uh, this inclination because over this breadth b the angle is alpha 2 so this is the alpha 2 angle so once uh, we determine we simplify further uh, you know by using we have said that uh, if uh, the uh, loading intensity if the load under uh, reference is actually right below the uh, you know the uh, wherever the load intensity is maximum the point uh, below the sur soil surface then using sigma z is equal to q by 2 pi into x by a alpha. Now what we do is that you sub we substitute a plus b for uh, x and a plus b by 2 for a alpha 1 plus alpha 2 for alpha. So uh, for sigma z1 uh, sigma z1 that is the stress sigma z1 that is the stress due to uh, you know this particular point due to the entire this uh, triangle. So uh, the load intensity is nothing but Q plus uh, 
b by a into q that is why we have written for q we have written q plus b by a into q 2 pi into for x now we are writing uh, because the, the, the strip width is nothing but a plus b so uh, uh, we are writing a plus b and, uh, and then a plus b by 2 that is for a that is nothing but th th this, this portion <coughs> this portion now uh, into alpha 1 plus alpha 2 so and uh, similarly uh, you know for uh, sigma uh, sigma uh, z2 which is nothing but q into b by a into 2 pi into b by b by 2 into alpha 2. So when we uh, you know take the difference that sigma z is equal to sigma z1 minus sigma z2 which is nothing but q by pi uh, q is nothing but the magnitude of the embankment. So how to get that is by if you know the embankment loading having uh, let us say uh, you know 20 uh, if his embankment is constructed with a field material having a unit weight of 20 kilo per meter cube then 20 into let us say embankment height is say uh, uh, 5 meters then it is about 120 kilo Pascals or 120 kilo Newton per meter square. So 120 r q by pi into a plus b by a into alpha 1 plus alpha 2 minus b by a into alpha 2. Now uh, so this is uh, indicated as sigma z is equal to i influence factor that is the i e that is i e is nothing but the influence factor for embankment loading where i e is nothing but uh, this uh, entire multiplication that is uh, the, this uh, 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 1 by pi into a plus b by a into alpha 1 plus alpha 2 minus b by a into alpha 2 which is actually nothing but uh, you know the function of 1 by pi into function of a by z into b by z where a by z is nothing but um, that the distance a or uh, that horizontal portion of the embankment and the distance b which is horizontal portion of the slope of the embankment slope portion of the embankment and the horizontal portion of the, the from the crest of the embankment to the central, uh, central line of the embankment where we can write that a by z and b by z. So sigma z is equal to i e into q. So this uh, for this actually the Osterberg charts are available and uh, where we can actually use this Osterberg charts uh, and then uh, try to get the uh, uh, you know the stress values. Say for example here uh, the i embankment that is i e influence factors are given and here the values of a by z. Uh, ranging from uh, 0 0.01 to 10 are given here and uh, this can be used for uh, even for uh, embankment uh, with uh, b is equal to 0 that means that if you are having a only triangular strip loading then the entire int the, the b by z is equal to 0 so then then this this curve we have to use and then we actually have depending upon the a by z value we can actually calculate the influence factor sigma z into this influence factor into the load intensity uh, sigma z is equal to ie into q we will be able to get what is the increase in vertical stress due to uh, you know the uh, embankment loading. So what we need to uh, note is that uh, this point will give the embankment uh, stress at this point or in this case if you are talking about uh, uh, you know the stress suppose b is equal to 0 then that means that the stress actually occurs only at the at center point. Let us say that we are having uh, uh, you know the uh, loading which is uh, symmetrical about uh, you know let us say about the uh, 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 x axis where uh, uh, you know at the center it is actually having a load intensity uh, q and then uh, on the both the sides actually is reducing to 0. So in this case what uh, we need to do is that we need to calculate the influence factor and multiply with 2 so that you know we get the uh, load intensity due to this and then load intensity due to this one. For example here when we have the, this is the symmetry of the embankment and if you wanted to take the stress due to embankment of the remaining portion then this multiplied into 2 we will be able to get the stress due to the, the complete embankment <coughs> that is the, the, the total embankment uh, distance. So this Osterberg charts are actually used for calculating the vertical stresses uh, for the embankment loadings. Uh, where uh, you know the theory which is actually uh, is uh, deduced from the uh, the uh, triangular strip uh, having uh, you know linearly varying increasing load and from there uh, what we have deduced is that we have deduced uh, uh, the sigma z is equal to sigma z1 minus sigma z2 and uh, from there uh, we have actually got the expression for uh, ie as a function of a by z and a is nothing but the horizontal distance of the embankment in the slope portion and b is nothing but uh, the horizontal distance of the embankment from the 
crest of the embankment to the center line of the embankment. So, uh, by uh, using this the uh, the uh, the increase in vertical stress at different points can be calculated. <coughs> Let us look into an example having a, you know example problem having a 5 meter high embankment basically it is to be constructed as shown in the figure and if the unit weight of the compacted soil is 18.5 kilo per meter cube and calculate the vertical stress due to solely to the embankment loading. So, uh, there can be initial effective stresses, but however what we are interested is that uh, uh, by treating this uh, mass as uh, uh, weightless medium, we calculate what is the increase in the vertical loading due to solely due to the embankment loading only at point A, at point B and at point C. So, if you notice that uh, you know we do not have the symmetry here, but is at the center, uh, but we need actually the embankment loading. So, if, if you look into this, this portion at point A the this portion of the embankment causes the loading and this portion of the embankment causes the loading. So, if you call this portion of the embankment as uh, portion A and portion B and the sigma z at A is equal to sigma z A1 uh, and the sigma z A2. If this is uh, portion A por this portion is called as A1 this portion called as A2 then the sigma z A is nothing but sigma z A1 and sigma z A2. So, both need to be added. Now here uh, when it comes to this point uh, we are having uh, an embankment uh, of uh, you know this particular shape. Uh, so the stress due to this portion and the stress due to this portion and the stress this to this portion need to be deducted. So this portion this stress need to be deducted. Now when it comes to this point here uh, we construct a fictitious embankment and then afterwards we again remove the loading due to the, inter the, the load due to the stress increase in stress due to this much portion. So, with that what will happen is that we get the increase in stress at a point C away from the embankment also. So, here uh, what we need to do is that uh, by using the same notations and uh, by using the method of superposition we can actually calculate the vertical stresses at point A, point B and point C. The method is that uh, we first have to uh, you know see uh, the uh, how the, uh, the the embankments can be divided and uh, if any fictitious portion need to be added it can be added and then uh, uh, you know then again the stress due to that particular fictitious portion need to be deducted. Once that is done we will actually able to get the stresses at point A, point B uh, you know point C and if required if you are having any point here at the toe that is like say B1 that also can be calculated. Um, now, uh, uh, by let us say we have actually discussed about uh, you know the linearly varying load and an embank stresses due to embankment loading, and uh, for certain uh, type of uh, uh, loading uh, uh, for in the loading areas, we can also have uh, you know the circular areas carrying the uniform uh, intensity. That means that it can be a uh, a ring foundation or it can be a a, a, a foundation for chimney. Uh, with a raft of having a two R diameter let us say and in that case it, you have a, a ring a, a raft of having a two R diameter. So, that means it will be subjected to or let us say that you we have say oil storage tank having a, uh, you know diameter of about uh, some 46 meters or so. Then uh, if it is subjected to oil of uh, certain unit weight or certain height and it is subjected to certain increase in stress. So, in order to calculate the increase in stress due to uh, you know any oil storage tank having certain diameter or uh, with certain load intensity we can actually the in, in practical applications we may, we may have this type of uh, circular areas carrying uniform pressures. Sometimes we also can have a uh, you know the ring uh, foundations that means that uh, if you are actually having R1 and R2 where R2 is greater than R1. So, R2 minus R1 uh, portion that much uh, is the breadth of the uh, ring and over which the loading is actually happens with uniform intensity Q. So, using uh, Bosnik's uh, point load solution. So, this can be reduced for example, in this particular slide and we are actually having uh, a, uh, a circular uh, shape loaded area having uh, at the center and we are actually calculating the increase in vertical stress at the center point of the below the center of the 
you know this uh, so called circular area and subjected to uniform load intensity. If R is the radius that is 0 here and extending here. Now consider a uh, you know a small uh, uh, sector uh, where uh, you know with an angle d alpha uh, then you know this portion this length of the arc which is nothing but uh, L into R into d alpha L is equal to R into d alpha and uh, assume that this small strip is actually having uh, uh, you know this uh, so called uh, the uh, this, this distance radial distance is dr the, the strip width here is dr and it is at a distance small r from the center. Now what we do is that we calculate uh, this particular uh, you know the uh, this length is nothing but r d alpha r d alpha d alpha is the angle. So dr into r d alpha is the uh, you know this area and they assume that uh, the point load in this area is nothing but q into dr into r d alpha. So what we are doing is that uh, we have taken a small strip having a dr into RDL, rd alpha dimensions and the, we are multiplying by the uniform load intensity q then point load on the elementary area is given by q into dr into rd alpha. So we are actually using the Bosnick's point load solution. Now due to that so called uh, you know the small element load is subjected to uh, increase in intensity q into dr into rd alpha we can calculate d sigma z is equal to uh, 3 q dr into r d alpha. So it is nothing but 3 q by 2 pi into z q by r square plus z square to the raise pi by 2 this is what actually we have discussed for q capital Q what we substituted is that uh, the small uh, d q is nothing but q into dr into r d alpha by 2 pi into z q by r square plus z square root raise pi by 2. Now increase in vertical stress at A due to the entire loaded area. So uh, in order to get this what we need to do is that the entire area is uh, 0 to 2 pi alpha is actually ranging from here alpha is equal to 0 here and then alpha is equal to 2 pi and uh, the radius that is the this circle and then uh, uh, this this width is actually given by r is equal to 0 to r so we need to do the double integration uh, sigma z is equal to uh, uh, d sigma z is equal to integral of d sigma z is equal to integral of uh, alpha is equal to 0 to alpha is equal to 2 pi integral of r, zero, r, uh, r is equal to 0 to r is equal to 2 pi and uh, for the, the small d sigma z we can substitute here where 3 q by 2 pi into z cube into r. So this particular r into r square plus z square to the raise pi by 2 into dr d alpha. So once we substitute and uh, you know the integrate the do the double integration and substitute what we get is that sigma z is equal to q into uh, within square bracket brackets 1 minus uh, 1 by 1 plus r by z whole square to the raise 3 by 2. So this particular uh, you know portion this particular component of this particular uh, equation is calculated as influence factor for the circular loaded area. So for different uh, r by z values so this, this, this particular increase in stress due to at the center of the loaded area. Suppose if you are actually wanted uh, do, due to load due to the if you if the increase in stress due to uh, this loaded area away, uh, away from the center then we need to have we need to use some other influence factor values but this is actually valid for the uh, increase in vertical stress. Uh, stress due to the load subjected to uniform load intensity having q and that too at the center of the loaded area only. So sigma z is equal to q into 1 minus 1 by r, 1 by r plus r by z whole square to the raise 3 by 2 that is so q into ic, I, IC where ic is nothing but the influence factor for the circular load area. So this we can actually get uh, uh, by using uh, charts also. So here uh, the circular area carrying uniform pressure. So the chart which is actually given here in terms of 2R by Z where R D is equal to capital 2R and I, I C that is the influence factor. So what we can get is that by knowing the D by Z uh, for a let us say that uh, we have a D by Z value of 1 and uh, the so influence factor is 0.3. So that means that 0 0.3 into, uh, into Q uh, that is the increase in stress due to the particular uh, circular load area. And this uh, vertical stress is at the uh, you know the center of the uh, the circular loaded area. So consider uh, an example here, where uh, a rectangular uh, concrete tower uh, is uh, provided on a raft uh, on a ring foundation, and mostly uh, these chimney foundations, particularly in uh, uh, 
uh, you know the coal based thermal power stations in thermal in uh, steel plants you will find this uh, chimney uh, chimneys and they are resting on uh, ring foundations and uh, there is in this particular problem the inner diameter of the ring foundation is given as 6 meters and outer diameter is given as 12 meters that means that here the inner diameter so the breadth of this uh, ring foundation is nothing but 12 minus 6 meters that is 6 meters and uh, on this uh, you know annually if you say that we are having a annular ring having uh, you know the breadth of 6 meters. So on this area uh, due to uh, you know the loading uh, different uh, sorts of uh, loading due to the shell uh, the shelf of the, the shell of the uh, you know this element. Uh, then you know the subjected to a 150 kilo Pascals of loading. So we need to calculate what is the vertical stress uh, at the center at 6 meter depth below the foundation. So for this uh, you know we have if you notice here the central portion is not subjected to any loading. So what we need to do is that you calculate the uh, in order to get the sigma z a uh, you know calculate the vertical stress due to the uh, entire area that is uh, entire diameter that is 24 meters diameter and minus the stress intensity due to you know this particular portion because this is particular portion is not loaded only this portion is subjected to load then you know what we can get is that we will get the that net increase in stress due to the loading on the ring foundation. So we need we need to use the same equation that is in case of R first we need to use here 12 meters then we get the sigma z then afterwards we need to use the r is equal to 6 meters then we get the vertical stress that is 1 uh, q into 1 minus uh, 1 by 1 plus uh, 12 by 6 whole square to the raise 3 by 2 minus q into 1 minus 1 by 6 by 6 whole square to the raise 3 by 2. So the net difference sigma z1 minus sigma z2 we get uh, the so called uh, the increase in vertical stress at a depth 6 meters below the. Uh, the so called uh, reinforced concrete tower having a ring foundation which is subjected to load intensity of 150 kilopascals. So after having uh, uh, you know looked into uh, you know the, sea, the so called uh, you know the circle area and uh, the embankment loadings let us also look into the vertical stresses below a rectangular loaded area uh, where uh, in this uh, particular figure where we it can be seen that this is the x axis and this is y axis and this is the uniform vertical load q per unit area and uh, and we are having a rectangular load in area l is the length along the x axis and b is the breadth uh, along the y axis and uh, this is the depth so we are actually calculating uh, at one of its corners of the rectangle so let us say that if you are having uh, a rectangular area of 2l by 2b so that means that we actually have to multiply uh, with the four times of that particular uh, you know load intensity by this is nothing but the method of super supervision. So uh, again uh, you know in order to calculate the increase in load intensity due to a rectangular load area. So here if you want uh, to calculate let us say for square load area when L is equal to B. So the, with that also you will able to get uh, for the square loaded area. So here uh, let us take for L, L, L and B and uh, at one of the corners like you know the, uh, this, this, this corner is under consideration now. So we are actually calculating the this x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 and uh, the along the z axis that is uh, you know the depth z. So uh, you know we can actually calculate what is the increase in stress due to. So again what we do is that we actually use the Bostix uh, point load solution as we have done in the, in the circular load the stress at point uh, P. Uh, due to uh, you know so the small increase in the stress uh, vertical stress due to point uh, point load acting on the small step which is actually is darkened portion here having dx along the uh, x axis and dy along the y axis. So the area is dx into dy and uh, the load intensity is q per unit area so q into dx dy is the small point load here acting at this particular point. So uh, using d sigma z is equal to uh, 3 q z q by 2 pi r to power of 5 and uh, with r square is equal to r square plus z square is equal to x square plus y square plus z square. So uh, uh, here what we can do is that uh, 3 into for q what we do is that small q into dx dy so small q into dx dy into 
z cube uh, divided by 2 pi into for r we what r uh, r for r what we are writing is that x square plus uh, y square plus z square that is root over uh, to the raise pi so we get x square plus y square plus z square is equal to, to the raise pi by 2 so d sigma z is equal to we have got something like 3 q dx dy z cube by 2 pi x square plus y square plus z square uh, to the raise pi by 2 so uh, here uh, by using uh, this vertical stress below a rectangular uh, loaded area on the surface so for this uh, uh, total increase in vertical stress at uh, 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 stress at point p due to the entire loaded area can be determined by integrating uh, integrating with the limits like x is equal to 0 to x is equal to l and y is equal to 0 to y is equal to b if you integrate in these uh, limits like with l and b then we actually get one of the at one of the corners what is the increase in stress due to the loaded area. So uh, this uh, is simplified with sigma z is equal to q into i sigma. So here this i sigma uh, or i r it can be like rectangular load area uh, where see i sigma is equal to 1 by 4 pi into uh, 2 m1 uh, divided by m square plus n square plus 1 to the raise 1 by 2 into uh, divided by m square plus n square plus m square n square plus 1 uh, into m square plus n square plus 2 divided by m square plus n square plus 1 plus tan inverse 2 m n m square plus n square plus 1 to the raise 1 by 2 divided by m square plus n square minus m square n square plus 1 to then bracket closes. So where here m is nothing but b by z n is nothing but l by z. So let us look uh, once again m is nothing but m is nothing but b by z n is nothing but l by z l is along the uh, length axis and uh, b is along the breadth axis. So here in this m is nothing but b by z n is nothing but l by z. So for this uh, we have uh, the, the Fordham charts vertical stress below the rectangle load area on the surface can be obtained by using uh, Fordham charts the values for uh, you know i sigma is equal to i can be obtained by using this Fordham uh, chart which is given by Fordham in 1948 and where m is equal to b by z and i and these are the different curves for n is equal to 0 0.1, n is equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 like this up to 2. So here uh, you know by knowing this uh, values so we get the influence factor uh, and uh, let us assume that we are actually calculating for a, uh, a square area having b then uh, we need to take say, say b by 2 and b by 2 uh, and then we get the uh, you know at the center to get the stress at the center to, uh, in, to get the stress at the center of a uh, area which is uh, having loaded b by 2 uh, uh, b by b dimensions then in that case you have to take for b by 2 and b by 2 and uh, in that case m is equal to 1 and uh, uh, depending upon the depth you can actually get based on that what you can uh, get the influence factor and that influence factor into 4 times you have to multiply to get the in load intensity uh, to get the sigma z. So vertical stress below the rectangular area on the surface can be given by sigma z is equal to q into i sigma. So i sigma is obtained let us say that at z is equal to uh, 2 meters and uh, b is equal to 2 meters then m is equal to 1 and n is equal to let us say that 0.3. So we will actually get the influence factor uh, i is equal to about 0 0.07 so 0 0.07 multiplied by q into you know the configuration whatever we consider we have to use that one so this is the fordham chart which is uh, given by fordham in 1948 and these are for these are used for the uh, in order to calculate the vertical stress below rectangular load area and is possible uh, for uh, so if you are actually calculating uh, uh, to calculate the settlements in a soil layer uh, particularly at the mid depth of the soil layer due to a rectangular loaded area then we have to use this uh, particularly in clays uh, you know you know we uh, we have to add the increase in vertical stress due to this to the initial effective stress so that we get sigma sigma naught dash plus delta sigma this delta sigma is nothing but at that particular point in the center of the clay layer how much uh, the loaded area imposes the vertical stress can be calculated. So this is used even in calculating vertical stresses and in, in settlement estimations at all. So this is another view of the Fordham chart and where in a similar way it is actually expressed where m 
and uh, I, uh, I R or uh, I sigma and uh, where uh, you know this uh, you know the this is the for the different n values which is given. So, uh, this is again uh, to give a, to get the vertical stress at the one of the corners. Um, now, let us uh, try to take one example where uh, we are actually having uh, a load of 1500 kilo Newton is uh, required to be carried on a foundation uh, having a uh, uh, 2 meter uh, square at a shallow depth of in a soil a shallow depth in a soil bus. And we need to determine the vertical stress at a point uh, below 5 meter below the surface below the center of the foundation assuming that the load is uniformly distributed over the foundation and assume that load acts as a point load at the center of the foundation. So, here uh, we are actually uh, you know assuming that uh, the load is uh, uniformly distributed over the foundation uh, and then uh, we are having a square foundation. So, 2 meter by 2 meter area it is not a rectangular area it is a square area and uh, uh, another other assumption what we have is so the, the prime of AC the load intensity is nothing but uh, uniform pressure is nothing but 1500 kilo Newton divided by 2 square uh, that is uh, 1500 divided by 2 square that is 375 kilo per meter square. And uh, if you look uh, the 375 kPa into uh, area we get the uh, uh, 1500 kilo Newton the load. So, uh, first is that we are assuming as a load intensity the increase in load the intensity is uh, uh, 375 kilo Pascals and uh, so by taking we need to calculate at a depth of uh, uh, 0.5 meter below the center of the foundation that means that we are having a square 2 meter by 2 meter. So, uh, here what we have is that uh, you know we have uh, 1 meter by 1 meter uh, 4 squares are there and then at, at each corner that is at each one of the corner let us say that uh, left corner we are actually getting for uh, the increase in vertical stress at a certain depth uh, of 5 meters and after getting the influence factor uh, from the curve then 4 q into i r. So, here the 4 is multiplied because of we are actually divided that area into 4 and 4 into 375 into 0 0.019. So, these are about 27 kilo Pascals and uh, now the second uh, uh, portion of the problem as asked is that assuming that the load acts as a point load at the center of the foundation. So, assuming that uh, when, when r by z is equal to 0 we know that uh, i p that influence factor for the point load is 0 0.4775 and it also can be given as 0 0.478 and uh, by for the sigma z is nothing but q by z square into i p. So, 1500 uh, divided by z is nothing but 5 meters. So, 1500 by 5 square into influence factor for the assumption of point load is 0.478. So, if you look into this the increase in vertical stress due to uh, the point load is actually comes to be uh, point load assumption for the in the given problem comes to as 29 kilo Pascals which is actually more than uh, what we have assumed for the uniform uh, pressure. So, uh, we need to note here the point load assumption should not be used if the depth to the point x uh, depth to the uh, uh, you know if the depth uh, to the this particular point x under the reference is uh, is less than the 3 times the larger dimensions. For example, this uh, larger dimension of the foundation is say uh, you know 2 meters 2 into 3 is uh, 6 meters and 6 into the depth is say 5 meters. So, it is <coughs> if it is less than uh, you know the uh, you know the so called uh, uh, <coughs> 3 times the larger dimensions then uh, uh, this particular point load assumption is not valid that means that one has one need to calculate the assuming as the uniform pressure. Now, uh, we have discussed about uh, rectangular areas uh, having uh, square areas or uh, sometimes we may have combination of the areas. <coughs> so, vertical stress due to an irregular shaped area suppose if you are having irregular shaped area loaded with uh, uniform load intensity. So, it can be a combination of circular area or it can be of any shape let us say that it can be of any shape. 
So if you need to calculate the vertical stress of any irregular shaped area and for this the new mark 1942 has developed uh, uh, you know the uh, influence charts uh, basically to compute the vertical stress and uh, these uh, influence charts are also there for horizontal and the shear stresses also within the soil mass due to the load area of any shape and uh, irregular shape or it can be any shape in the sense it can be square area or it can be rectangular area and the point of interest uh, if it is known then you know, we can actually uh, you know uh, place the area drawn to the scale as per the procedure outlined by new arc new mark uh, then you know we can calculate the at below any point on either side or outside the so here note if you note it here no, we notice here we can calculate the vertical stress uh, either the point can lie inside or outside as a whole we need not require to divide into uh, you know the method of superposition need not be used. So here uh, we can actually calculate uh, in point on either side or outside the load area. So for this uh, you know the basis of this uh, you know deducing this new mark chart is uh, uh, the circular loaded area subjected to uniform load intensity. So we actually have deduced an expression for increase in vertical stress at the center of the circle for a circular loaded area. Okay. So based on this, uh, you know, particularly by using this concept, uh, the new mark developed uh, these influence charts. Now let us see that how this actually, uh, you know, conceptualize and uh, how this uh, can be used in uh, calculating the vertical stresses uh, due to the area of any shape, irregular shape or any uh, regular shape. Uh, where for a point lying uh, either inside or outside the load area. Now consider a circular uh, low area of R1 uh, loaded with a uniform load intensity Q. So that means that you are having a circular loaded area, uh, circular area of having uh, dimension R1 and the O at the center and uh, to be divided that is uh, arbitrarily it has been uh, 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 divided into 20 sectors. So like this OBC like that it has been divided into 20 sectors uh, that means that each uh, the center angle is about 18 degrees and then the BC is that arc length like that uh, this entire area is divided into 20 sectors. So this entire area is loaded to uh, with a load intensity of Q. Now as I said that this is actually from the uh, you know the circular load uh, principle vertical stress at uh, point O and a depth jet below its base for one sector area uh, is nothing but uh, Q by 20 uh, because that is we are actually talking about the one sector area into 1 minus 1 by 1 plus R1 where R is equal to R1 we have substituted now R1 by z whole square to the raise 3 by 2. Now if that left side of the circular area is actually equivalent to load intensity of Q by so if you are having now when we say that this total number of Newmark circles are divided into 10. So there will be total number of Newmark circles are 10 and these are fixed arbitrarily by Q by 10 into 20. So the influence factor for you know is nothing but 0.005 Q. So this is the influence factor which was considered. So for the calculating the radius of the first new mark circle so if this is assumed as if the if the left hand side portion of this equation is assumed as the equal to 0 0.005 q is equal to q by 20 into 1 minus 1 by 1 plus r1 by z whole square to the raise 3 by 2 by solving we get r1 by z is equal to 0 0.27 r1 by z is equal to 0 0.27 that means that the first new mark circle will have 0.27 times the diameter jet. So this is for the increase in vertical stress due to an irregular shaped area loaded with an in, uh, uniform load intensity and in this particular slide we have got the radius of the first new mark circle. Now if the circle is drawn with the radius R1 equal to 0.27 jet and the area divided into 20 area units each area unit will be produced in a vertical stress equal to 0 0.05 Q at a depth jet below the center that is the meaning. Now what we do is that we take another circle where radius is R2 and R2 greater than R1 
and uh, uh, the second concentric circle of radius be drawn and divide uh, uh, into 20 area units and the total stress due to area units O B C and B B dash C C dash that is that this portion O B dash uh, C dash this portion is let us assume that uh, you know this portion is 0 0.005 Q we have said and uh, this portion also we assume that is as a 0 0.005 Q. So uh, in order to get the radius R2 uh, you know now what we do is that 2 into 0 0.005 Q is equal to Q by 20 into 1 minus 1 by 1 plus R2 by Z whole square to the raised 3 by 2. So solving we get R2 by Z is equal to 0 0.4 in the same way uh, by doing for third circle 3 into 0 0.005 Q and fourth circle 4 into 0 0.005 Q. Similarly, tenth circle 10 into 0 0.005 Q uh, what we get is that uh, uh, we get the radius of the different radii of the different new mark circles. So, R1, R2, R3, R4, R8, R9. So, this all concentric circles radius can be calculated. Now, the equation for the radius of the tenth circle is given by as I said 10 into 0 0.005 Q. So, this Q by 20 Q by 20 is equal to 1 minus 1 by uh, uh, 1 plus R10 by Z whole square to the raised d by 2. By solving we get R10 by Z as infinity. So, the tenth circle of the new mark uh, chart is actually for the vertical stress is infinity. So, uh, you know with this we can actually get uh, the new mark uh, circles uh, and uh, the uh, vertical stress due to irregular, irregular sh shaped area can be found out and uh, here in this particular table. Uh, the circle number and the radius r by z 1 r by z is equal to 1 uh, this is for first circle second circle and the tenth circle the radius is infinity. So uh, by knowing these uh, values we can actually calculate construct the circles and once the uh, more uh, new mark uh, chart is ready then let us say that we have wanted to calculate the stress increase in stress due to uh, circular loaded area and a point is outside the uh, loaded area. And that point has to be placed in the center of that uh, new mark chart. And uh, what we need to calculate is that the number of uh, uh, sector points uh, covered within that uh, foundation area drawn to the scale uh, on the generally here uh, a transparent sheet is used a tracing paper sheet is used to draw the uh, loaded area. Uh, so that the, uh, the the number of uh, sectors covered the loaded covering the loaded area can be calculated, and with that we can actually calculate the influence at that uh, number into that uh, influence factor into the load intensity. We will be able to get the increase in stress. So here in this particular uh, slide, uh, a new mark uh, uh, chart is actually given, wherein actually we have uh, uh, the uh, uh, we have. Uh, uh, yeah, no, this uh, one, one, one first circle, second circle, third circle and this is the third the last circle which is at infinity. So only the nine circles are shown here. So new marks influence chart for vertical stress uh, and influence values per unit pressure that is 0 0.005. So here sigma z is equal to 0 0.005 qn and n is the number of uh, influence areas covered by the let's have, suppose example we have the rectangular area. So in this area. Uh, what we do is that we calculate how many uh, number of this uh, rectangular areas are there and some approximations can be made uh, because uh, we cannot actually get the accurate number of the rectangular these areas. So let us say this is 1, 2, 3 like that when you count you may get uh, they have 29.5 or it can be approximated a whole number and that uh, number is taken multiplied into Q into this influence factor then we can actually get the. Uh, you know first so first of all uh, any loaded area if it is there the loaded area is drawn on the tracing paper to a scale such that the length of the scale line the length of the scale line on the chart represents the depth z at which uh, the vertical stress is required. So if z uh, is equal to 5 meters so that, that the length of the scale line is actually drawn to that uh, so the, the loaded area is drawn on the tracing paper to a scale such that the length of the scale line on the chart represents the depth z uh, at which the vertical stress is required. So depth z is accounted uh, by uh, you know by making the area drawn to that particular scale. So the load area is drawn on the tracing paper to a scale such that the length of the scale line on the 
chart represents the depth z at which the vertical stress is required. So let us take a problem where a rectangular, rectangular foundation having 6 meter by 3 meter carries a uniform pressure of 300 kilo Pascals and, and near the surface of the soil mass. So here what we have is that determine the vertical stress at a depth 3 meter below the point A that is at this point 3 meters below this point A. So we have a rectangular area here and this point A is here okay and the outside and this point is 1.5 meter away from the long edge of the foundation and using the influence factors and the new marks influence chart. So by using the rectangular loaded areas so because this area is not subject to load what we have to do is that we have to use the method of superposition. So we assume that entire area is loaded now and this portion which is actually not having any load so we have to take the apply the negative loading. So by taking increase by calculating the vertical stress due to these two triangles at the so that we will get at this particular point and minus the stress due to these two triangles with a negative loading what we get is this the so called vertical stress at this point. So this minus this what we get is that vertical stress at the point. Now what by using the new marks chart what we can do is that you can we can actually draw we need to calculate at a depth of you know this stress depth 3 meter below the point A. So with the scale drawn to 3 meters you can draw the area and put this point A at the uh, to, uh, with the depth scale and put this point A at the uh, center of the new mark chart then calculate the number of squares and with that we can actually calculate what is the increase in the stress. So the solution is uh, calculated uh, as explained here uh, 2 into 300 into 0 0.193 minus 2 into 300 into 0 0.120 so this is the due to the influence factors the rectangular load area and by using the uh, Fordham chart we have got this. And using the new mark chart we get as part of 45 kilo Pascals which is nothing but the load areas drawn on the tracing pad to the scale such that the length scale line of the chart represents the depth z is equal to 3 meters at which vertical stress is required. Suppose if z is equal to 5 meters then the scale of the loaded area changes. The area is positioned such that point A is at the center line of the chart and number of the influence areas are calculated. In this particular case we get 30. So 0 0.005 into 30 into 300 we get 45 kilo Pascals. So this is how you know uh, the you can actually calculate suppose if you are having a regular irregular shape and that is also can be applied and calculated uh, vertical stresses, shear stresses and uh, the horizontal uh, uh, can be calculated. So this is another problem uh, where the determine the vertical stress increase at a for a point uh, at a depth of 6 meter below the center of the invert of a newly built spread footing uh, where uh, you know 3 meter by 4 meter in area. So we need to calculate at this particular point. So this is the 2000 kilo Newton load is given. So what we need to do is that again use the method of superposition and uh, at the center so that we can actually get the vertical stress due to this portion of the triangle and this portion of the triangle this portion of the square rectangular area this portion of the area this portion of the area and this portion of the area. And by method of superposition, we can actually calculate the what is the increase in stress at this particular point. So, uh, like this, we actually have the number of application problems. So, we take this particular problem having a strip footing of 2 meter wide area covers an uniform pressure of 250 kilo Pascals on the surface of the deposit of sand. The water table is at the surface, and the saturated unit weight of the sand is 20 kilo, 20 kilo per meter cube, and K0 is 0.4. So determine the effective vertical and horizontal stresses at a point 3 meter below the center of the footing before and after the application of the pressure. So before the application of the pressure you calculate vertical stress that is effective stress and multiplied by K0 value uh, we get the horizontal stress. After loading uh, then uh, by applying uh, by calculating from the, uh, the, uh, the strip uh, loading uh, equation for the sigma z we can actually calculate what is the increase in stress. So uh, with that we can actually get uh, before loading and after loading what are the uh, you know the increase in the stresses. So in this particular uh, lecture we try to understand about uh, the stresses due to surface loads and wherein uh, uh, when uh, you have got the different uh, shapes and uh, how we can actually use the Bosnik's uh, theory uh, for calculating the uh, 
uh, the stresses particularly primarily we have primarily we have covered about the increase in vertical stresses of course there is a possibility that horizontal stresses and uh, the shear stresses also can be calculated and uh, so these stresses cause uh, you know the settlements in the soil and also undergoes uh, you know the volume changes can take place so further uh, we actually uh, look into the the concepts of how these uh, you know the loaded areas uh, you know cause uh, the increase in the consolidation and uh, or uh, you know if the consolidation does not happen how we can actually accelerate the consolidation so that uh, the settlements before the construction of structure can be uh, anticipated. 